Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. How are you today? Uh, welcome to another episode of Smooth Death Saturday. Uh, we've been talking all about Azure, deploying apps to Azure, working with deployment slots, and all that. Um, I hope we've been keeping safe also, and we've been making good use of the time. We have uh, to work from home to learn some new things and stuff. All right, so today on the show, we'll be talking about monitoring your application performance with application insights. And we'll walk through um, a little bit of what application insights is all about, uh, why it came to be, and all that, and how you can add this to your existing applications or well, some code you want to write from scratch the benefits of it and all that. We'll also uh, talk about how you can monitor your application telemetry from the Azure portal, and then we'll walk through some of the features of application insights, and then we'll call it a wrap for the day. So let's get into it. Um, so application insights is um, an application performance monitoring tool. Let's in a scenario here you have a web application running on a server somewhere and you want to know what is going on with it how many requests are eating the server every minute every second what is the response rate of this server is it performing as it normally should uh is this what sort of errors am i getting if there are any errors on my application or whatever application insights Let's me do that by monitoring the performance of my application. We can also um, use it to check, uh, to track custom events. Maybe you have specific events you want to log in your application, you can use it to do all that. So it's basically a tool or a service you can use to monitor telemetry and performance of your application, monitor the error, status checks and all that. And the sweet part is you can also set alerts. So if some things don't uh, if there's a drift from your normal uh, working scenario for the application, you could set alerts, uh, maybe to run some automated tasks or to send an email or SMS and all sorts. And that's all we'll look into today. So let's talk about adding application insights into your application. There are two major ways to do this. Uh, the first way is you can do that from Azure to add it to an existing application. And it works for basically applications as long as it's code. So Java, .NET, Node.js, plain HTML, CSS, JavaScript applications, uh, PHP applications. It, basically anything, any code you write, it works for it. So that is what application all lets you do. It lets you monitor it across any programming language that you write. So let's talk about adding it from the Azure portal first. So over here, I have Azure Open. This is where we stopped last week, of course. I have uh, one more for that to load up. I got my two applications here. So if I go into the into my resource group rather, I shouldn't have gone into this. Okay. So this is my resource group over here. Oh, things are still loading. I'm just waiting for it. Things are still loading up. So I got my web application here. You can see the URL. You can see the plan we configured for it and all that from previous episodes. Uh, I could go into the application insights area over here and just click into it and see what I can do with it. You can actually see the current telemetry of the application, and this is just basic out of the box of what application app services in Azure gives you. You could go ahead and actually do more. Now, uh, if I go up here. Uh, let me go into the resource group itself. 
this questions just a little bit. If I go into the resource group itself, I can see all the resources I have there, and you can actually see I have an application inside resource already created. And how do I do this? It's pretty simple. I go ahead and add. And then I search for application insights. Insights. Select that from the list. And then you just click on create. And then you fill in all the details you need to fill the name of the application insight resource, the resource group it should belong to, and the region. Okay, you can set all that in here. I can set types for it. We'll talk about types as we go very much deeper. So that's what I did here. So let me close that up and go into what I already created in Azure. So let me go back here. So I have that application inside resource right here. So it's loading up. Okay, so I can actually see current telemetry of my application. It's got six hour requests in the last one hour. So in the last one hour, it's got about six requests over here. Six requests, you can see. Uh, there's been no failure so far. I could set all the timelines to go as wide as I want it to go. So you can see in the last 30 days, it's got some of the four total server requests and all sorts. So you can check all that telemetry in there so now how do i now apply this to my application so you could go ahead to let me go back into the old resource group and what i'll do is i'll go to this staging application because i actually tied it to this production application i'll go to the staging application that's the deployment slot we talked about that in the last episode if you missed it you can go ahead and check that out so I go into the staging application and I go ahead and click on application insights. I think this is actually binded. Oh, it's not. You can see application insights is not turned on for this application. Application insights is not turned on, so I need to turn that on. So I'll click on that to turn it on. And then I will just check all these boxes. Um, so what I'll do is uh okay so it's asking me to create a new resource over here but i know i have an existing resource i actually want to tie it to so if i want to create a new application inside resource to track this i can do that or i can tie it to an existing application inside resource i'll actually go ahead and tie it to an existing resource because they basically perform the same thing and i want to show some little bit of details of it much later so i'll go ahead and select an existing resource and i'll click on the one i currently have and i will go ahead and check out the recommended uh boxes i know my application is dotnet so you can see over here actually you can write it you can use the application inside for dotnet dotnet core node.js java python so i will use i'll select dotnet core and all this so i will normally recommend you go ahead and check out these recommended boxes so that uh so the first part is you can uh, you can get collection level at application, you can get uh, insights at application level. You can also profile your application so you can configure. Uh, you can see where time is spent because you can say uh, user spent X minutes or X seconds on a particular feature on a particular page. You can track all that. You can also track snapshots of your application, local variables. With, so, for example, if an expert is running a particular line, you can deep dive into that particular line of code to see what actually went wrong. And also, you, want, you might want to check dependency on things like SQL server connections and all that. So, I'll just click on apply for that. And then, as soon as I do that, it picks up and starts monitoring the telemetry. So, that is good to go. Next thing I want to do is actually add it into my application, my existing application, because uh, this is the one that is actually binded to the deployed application. So this works in cases where I probably don't have access to code anymore, or if I do something in code, it will just go kaboom. So I can use application insights and monitor it straight up from, from inside Azure, and all things will go fine. All right, so if I click on view application inside data, 
I can see all the information about the application and how it's performing. Actually, look at our shows an application that has been in production for a much longer time. And I can check all that out. Another sweet part, I think I should leave that for the last part where we'll talk about uh, the features. And I walk through all that for us. So if I go now and add it to my application, so I got just to open here, just for burst up last week uh, with the staging slots and all that. Uh, right here, we got all that. So what I'll do is, if I'm using Visual Studio 2019 version 16.6.2, uh, but so the edition you are using might be different from what you're seeing in my own view, but the principle is still the same. Right. So if I right click over here, you see here, I can just go ahead and configure application inside resource like that. So what I'll do is I'll click on that, configure application insights. So I'll just wait a few moments for that to load up. So I could decide to add it as an SDK to just monitor my application telemetry locally, or I can decide to monitor uh, my old web application and the usage and everything. So I'll select the second option. So what it will do for me to connect to the cloud resource, or I can just go ahead and create a new application inside components right here. I can decide whichever one works fine for me. So I will go ahead now. So it's loading all my services here i'll just wait a bit so you can see the resource here and i'll just click on it and i'll click on next and then i want to add it to my local user secrets i'll click on next for that and then finish so it's go ahead and add the uh nuggets package for application insights to my code to my application and then uh import the necessary keys put it in my user script store and then to start monitoring my application so i just wait a bit of time for that to finish configuring and it's almost done and it's ready so you can see everything is ready and good to go you can see the nugget package is installed for me uh version 2.3.2.1 3.1 it's inserted in my code and all sorts I can forget all that. So I'll click on close over here and then it's connected already to it. So in .NET, uh, in Visual Studio, you can connect to other services, but we'll deal with that uh, in much later episodes. So if I go ahead now and run this application, so I'll just wait a bit of time for that to load up. It's loading up and uh, it's launching my browser and I can see the application here. So the moment I actually launch the application, what happens is start collecting telemetry and I can verify that over here. So let's just wait a bit for this to finish loading or I can just snap it to the side. So we'll just wait for everything to launch. Nine is super fast. Almost good to go. Let me just stop some apps running away here. taken a long time to load up that's taking a really long time I just have to wait for it. 
szomekában a napsebb. I'm actually wondering why it's taking so long. Um, let me stop running it and just run it over again. So I'll stop debugging it. Oh, it's actually started capturing information. But let me run it again. I think it should load up faster now. I hope. While I wait for that one to load, let me actually go ahead and click on the Application Insights tab up here and we'll see that list populate over here as soon as it starts loading up. So while I wait for that tab to load up, I'll just wait for it and let it do its thing. So if I go back into Azure, where do I get that? So I got this over here. I can actually go ahead and see the real-time performance of the application so if i go into uh live metrics so i can monitor the application is performing in real time well near real time of course not like 100 percent real time um so let me just go into that now it might take a bit of time uh oh let me close that Just refresh all this. Okay, I think something is basically wrong over here. Oh, it's finally loaded. Thank God. It is finally loaded up. And maybe I might be able to see some information over here. So it finally loaded. If I go back into Visual Studio, you see I have seven application insights events already loaded up. You can see over here, I have seven application insights events and I can just go ahead and refresh this. So I have 11 events now. I'll just go ahead and refresh that and it should load some information up for me. Update. Well, it might take some time to load all the stuff up here. But of course, we know it's loading all the things up here. Everything is refreshing. Not bad. Okay, so we have all that telemetry here. So what I can actually do is just go ahead and click some pages all around to be sure things are working fine. Uh, let me just go ahead and click pages. It's not like it's doing any special thing, of course. I just go ahead and click around. All right. Another thing I'll actually try to do is go to a page that does not exist. All right. So let me go to something like this. You see, it's telling me page not found. Normally, the status code for that would be error 400. Uh, let me just try another one. So I can do all that. All right, so let me stop running that for now. And let me go back and stop this debug session. Okay. So now that the debugging session is stopped, uh, so let me get the data from the debug session. Let me just click okay on this. I think I'll come back to this one a little bit much later. Uh, so what I want to do is actually go into Azure. Okay, go into Azure. Let me refer this page again. Okay, that is loading up. Good. And it's loaded up.
Okay, so this is live metrics page, even though I'm not really concerned about it right now anymore. Okay, it's trying to load it up now. Let's just wait for it. Oh, oh. so this is what the live view looks like. So in the last 60 seconds, you've seen the sort of requests that are coming. So we have one server that is live with no 2% of CPU usage. Let me zoom into that. You can see we only got 2% CPU usage, zero requests per second, using 94 megabytes of memory, you can see exception rates, uh, CPU usage and all sort of information. And I can expand the scope of this if I want. Uh, but what I'll do is, let me just go ahead and uh, run some requests over here uh, on the live page, uh, uh, production and staging environments. All right, I think I got some information. Oh, you can see this uh, spike in the request. You can see the spike, you can see things that are happening. And if there are problems, you'll see them on the right hand side over here. Also, if I was to run this from my local machine again, let's see what will happen. So let's run this from my local machine again. I just gotta wait for it. No rush. All right. While that is loading, let me go back into live metrics and we'll see what happens. Let's just wait for it. So we are looking around this area. We're looking down here, around this area. This is the area we're looking at to see if a server will be added to that list. Okay, oh, that does a filter. Let me just remove that. We'll just wait a bit. It will pop up as soon as I start collecting that information. So let me just try and load some other pages here. Let me try and do some bad work also and try to find pages that does not exist. Uh, we'll enter on that. Okay, that should give me a not found. All right. That guy is still loading. I don't know why it's taking so long. All right. Uh, so I can actually see stuff roll up as I start doing the request, as the requests are coming and all sorts. So let me actually show us one that is live uh, after this one looks, of course, because I wanted to show the live metrics in this area. Now, I don't understand my pc anymore to be honest i do not understand just to load a simple web application okay i think i'll come back to this a little bit much later after it loads and all that so let me actually show you what a real life application looks like okay uh, so I have uh, an application over here in Azure that is already running in production. So in the last one, I was getting about 13,000 requests. Uh, the server response time is uh, 0.53 53 milliseconds, which looks good. I could filter the dates to be more, uh, maybe 30 minutes, one hour, six hours, up to 30 days. If I dive a little bit deeper, I could uh, go in depth and see data for a very much longer range of time so if i actually go into 30 days uh you can see here uh it's got in 5.7 million requests 1.24 millisecond request and i've got in about 2.5 no, 2500 errors which is scary most of them are actually error 404 i know what is going on in the application most of the errors are error 404 not error 500 so i think i'm a little bit safe <laughs> just kidding so if i um so I can go and check more of these metrics. So let's actually deal first with the problems, right? 
Uh, so if I click on the failure count, it will go and retrieve all the information of the errors that have happened in the application, all the failures, server failure, and dependency call failures, all sort of failures is what it will log for me inside this page that it's loading up. So we just wait a bit for that to load up. Let's check on our slow loading app. Oh, it's up again. It's up now, finally. But we don't really care, do we? We'll check on this one later. We'll come back to it. All right, this is loading up. Aha! Now you see the errors popping up here. So you see where the problems are coming from. You can actually see the kind of request that came in for it. Um, let me zoom a little bit in with that. You can see the name of the request. You can see uh, everything that went on. Uh, so I said there four four was probably the biggest one. So there's a mirror five hundred also, but uh, I think I'll be safe with that. All right, so if I click into that, into the 404 errors or any error whatsoever, I will be able to see the details of what actually happened in the in the results. Okay, so I can see the problem is coming from trying to find uh, something in a JavaScript map file. I can click into that to get my information. All right, so I can see the environment is production. I can see all that details in here, what they try to find and all that. So I could, I won't get into DevOps, talk about creating the work item back into Agile DevOps or GitHub or whichever, uh, what's it called, whichever issue tracking system we're using for our organizations. So that's that about a 404 error. I could also check what happened before and after over here. Also, let's actually check on the error 500. I think we should be interested in this one. So I'll click on the error 500 from over here. And I'll see the most uh, frequent occurrence of the error 500. So most of that problem is happening from the login. Uh, users trying to log into the application. I can see uh, it's doing a post to alt slash login. Now while that loads, let's check on our slow guy. Uh, still there. Uh, let me just bang. Dun. 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 Well. Okay, we'll check on this one later. Let's 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 have more fun. All right, let's get some more problems here, shall we? All right, so if I want to go deeper, uh, just a moment, I click some wrong buttons now. All right, so I'm seeing some information over here. Okay, I think it's good now. So I can see the list of information that happened. And so I try to get some information from the database when it tried to log in. And I can see where that problem occurred. System of model exception occurred on an SQL dependency over here. So it's an, it was an SQL dependency problem and it happened in production. And you can see the command that happened. I can see all, all that sort of information inside here which is fun because if I told my developer this pro app is crashing, it's not working fine, I will know exactly where to go to fix the problem. I know now the problem is based on the database. So I know I'm supposed to look into the connection between the database and the application right here. Let me see if I can get more. So let me actually go into the this home slash error 
and see if there's more information for that. Uh, there's none about that. Okay. Is there? There is. Yep, there is. There is. So let me check this to show to just show my code. So what happens is I can see it's 0500. It's trying to get to this request. And then the problem is somewhere in my Swash Boku generator, in my Swagger generator. Let me actually look for more. Let me try this one, this product slash product. I should be able to get more information based on that. Oh, yes. I get my information. So I can check. This is the URL that the user requested. You can see that the URL requested. And I can check this is just my code box to see where the problem is happening. So I can do all that and get deep information and deep insights into how my application is performing in my environment. Um, so let's check back on this slow dude over here. Okay, so another part of application inside is uh, application map. So if you want to check uh, what dependencies your application are calling. So let me just uh, drive a little bit back here. So if I go into application map, okay. Let me just uh, wait for that to load up. So application map shows my dependency graph what my application is calling uh i would calling it and all sorts so i can check all the dependency graphing here so this application is calling a database service or it's sort of doing a redundant call to itself also which is sort of weird uh i could change the layout of the view either to go circular or go uh linear uh so let me actually do a little bit more let me uh include the scope of this to 30 days right let me increase the time scope to 30 days and we we'll actually see more dependency pop up in here. Okay, now good. You can see it's connecting to an API somewhere. It's connecting to Google. It's connecting to uh, the payment gateway. It's connecting to the database. It's also connecting to a storage account. And it's also you know, depending on itself. So I can check all this dependency and see which request was successful. And if I actually run on three instances, as you see here, uh, let me uh, zoom into that. Can I zoom into it? Uh, let me just put that to load up. Okay. You can see three instances of the application were running. So I had one in dev, I had one in staging, I had one in production. There are 5.8 million calls in the last 30 days to this application. So I can see top filling requests by their names, slowest requests, uh, I can check uh, like the common properties that this request have and all sorts. So that's about application map. So I can check uh, everything my application depends on. I can also go ahead and check on the performance of the application. Let's actually check on this. It's critically important uh, for using these uh, things like this. So to check if your performance is actually optimal or not. So I just wait for all that to load up. Okay, so I can see it's in the, it's in the green range. That means performance is fairly okay. So I think I'm good in the last 24 hours. Um, I could go ahead and do other things. I could, uh, oh, let me come down here. Let me go into users. So I can check how many users were visiting my application uh, in a particular time range. And the second part of this is also I can export this to say a BI solution like Power BI and get and design my own custom charts. If this charts in Azure is not sufficient for you, you can go ahead and design your custom charts. You can use the SDKs to connect to this and using your custom application to be on do some custom reporting with it. You could do all sorts uh, with the insights you have from how your application is performing. So let me just wait for that to load. All right, it's loading up. So I can see information about the users of this application. 
uh, for a particular time range. I just wait for that to load up. Wow, I pray the internet is not too slow. Okay, the last 24 hours, no users, so everything was just an automated count. But let me increase this scope now to 90 days. I will see what happens. It's loading up. Wow, this is weird. I should have had users in the last 90 days. No problem. Uh, if I go to sessions, I can see my information. Um, oh, hold up. Let me close this and actually show us the slow guy over here. Ah, it's got into 58 events already. I don't know where it's gotten that from. Uh, but uh, let's go back here. So if I go into the users area over here, let me actually stop the debug session on my machine here. Everything can be fine and running good. All right. So in the last 24 hours, I'm not sure if this will show just like our other friend over there. Oh, ho. in the last 24 hours, I've had one user. Do you remember this resource is near, so I can see this information over here. I've had one user, and I can see the time range where they are visiting the applications. I could see the sessions, the session information. So there just been one session in the last 24 hours by all the users. I can see events if I have it. I can see the flow of users, so how they interact from page to page in the application. I can check all that. So it's pretty much as so you can see here. Our session started. Our users went from home page to privacy policy to privacy policy to home page to ending the session. I could just delve deeper into it to see what is actually happening. I can see my user retention also. So I can see how long my user stays still on the application. Uh, so I can see the time range, uh, what time they spent on the application. So most of the time is spent on these pages. I can check all this. I can check it as a bar result or as a line chat. I can also save this and export it somewhere if I want to. Uh, so there's just a whole lot you can do. Also, there's the continuous export parts. So what happens is application insights keep this data for up to 90 days. So what happens is uh, if you want to keep your data for longer than 90 days, you need to do what we call a continuous export to a storage. So an example for you can put that is in uh, a storage account in Azure to continuously put that look of information in so you can have a long range of data that you want to. Also, if you'll have an API access, so if you want to use this in uh, a sort of application somewhere or a custom application, you need to create that, that API key that you now connects with in your application, whatever language you're writing it in, it will be good to go. Also, the smart detection settings where it uh, gets so it would have monitored the normal running state of the application and what it does is if there's a deviation from that you can configure what is supposed to happen based on that using uh, this feature here called smart detection so normally uh there will be no detection because this app is near but of course if something weird was to happen it would show up over here so that's that about that so, um, so I guess uh, I'm pretty much done for this episode. Uh, if you have any questions, we'll treat them, uh, of course. Um, so if you have questions, put them in. I'll check them out and see how I can answer all the questions you might have. So uh, that's it on this episode of Smoother Saturday. Uh, thank you for watching. If you're watching this on YouTube, please go ahead and like this uh, video. Subscribe if you're not subscribed already so you get notifications when I post new videos. Also, uh, watch out for my podcast. Uh, I post every Thursday. It's been awesome. Uh, so I was on break this week, sort of. Uh, but it's resuming next week. Well, I've already pre-recorded 
uh, what is supposed to go live for the next two weeks. So it's an awesome episode. To be honest, it was it was it was on point. So you wanna check it out. So thank you guys very much, and I will see you next week. Bye. -bye.